So, uh, this is Sound Out here, uh, here at the Apple Creek Comic Con. Today, I'll be interviewing Steve Cardenas, who played Rocky in Power Rangers, uh, through a Power, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Zeo. Yeah. So, we uh, at Hirotaku are big Power Rangers fans, so we always like to take a chance to interview um, the actors that are Power Rangers. And the, the question that I always have is, how, how are the interactions you have with fans at conventions, and overall your general impression of the fandom? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, anybody that's not grateful for their fans shouldn't be, you know, shouldn't be coming to these shows or anything yeah. like that, you know? So uh, I'm really grateful for my fans, you know? Uh, I didn't realize I had so many fans, you know, because after I stopped doing the show, I didn't really have anything to do with acting or Power Rangers or anything like that for many, many years. And then in 2007, they put together something called Power Morphicon, which was like a Power Ranger convention that uh, was just solely for Power Rangers. So I got invited to that, and when I went to that show, I remember first walking out of the hotel lobby and walking to the ballroom that we were about to do the show, and there was a whole group of people just lined up, and they started cheering and applauding as soon as I walked out. And I was like, wow, I didn't realize there was so many fans, you know? Yeah. They were still around, and they still existed, you know? So uh, I was pretty happy about that, and, you know, really grateful and really glad to be a part of something so cool. So the question I was going to ask is, um, how's your life been since Power Rangers? Um, well, um, I started out my life, my career as doing martial, teaching martial arts, you know. Um, that's what got me into Power Rangers because they, they hired me because I knew how to do martial arts. So uh, that's always been my love, has been being a martial arts instructor. I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life. So after Power Rangers, I opened up my own martial arts studio and I've been running martial arts studios ever since. That's pretty that's impressive. That's what I still do now. All right. So... Uh, back in 19, was it 1994? 1994. Uh, you were replacing the Red Ranger, which was the current leader of the team. Yeah. Were you ever nervous about filling in the huge role because of this large success that was happening at the time? Oh, yeah. I was really nervous, you know. I, I, I was really worried that how the fans were going to react to me because, you know, I knew there were going to be a lot of pissed off people, you know? Yeah. So uh, I just was hoping that, you know, I'd be able to try to at least try to live up to it. You know, and, um, you know, the thing was that everybody on the set was really cool to me, so that really helped ease me, ease me into the transition. But, yeah, in the beginning, I was very nervous about it, the fact that I was replacing somebody. But over time, everybody accepted it. So, so the thing that uh, always comes up to mind is, you know, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie was filmed during the course of the TV series. Mm -hmm. How was it different filming for that movie as opposed to the series itself? It's a good question. Um, the this TV show um, was filmed on a really tight budget, and we had to move everything very, 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 very quickly. You know, so everything was shot really, really fast, and we were shooting several episodes at a time. You know, we were shooting two, three episodes at a time. So we do many costume changes, wardrobe changes, different sets, pouncing around the the, 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 the sound stage. You know, all day we'd work like 12 hours a day, five days a week, and uh, it was no joke. Um, the movie, though, was a lot slower. I found myself sitting on my trailer for hours sometimes with nothing to do because they would just film. You know, we'd film a scene and we'd do the same scene over and over and over and over. We did like 30 takes on every scene, so if I wasn't in a particular scene, I, I, I'd be day gone off. for hours. Yeah, sometimes I'd have days off, you know? So, uh, you, know, we, you know, it was really like, you know, we would film sometimes like, you know, two episodes in a week. Uh, on the show and then the movie it took like four months to complete the movie you know four months for two for an hour and a half segment so you know there was uh, a definite difference as far as you know the type the, you know, the production value was much bigger and much greater as well too so they could afford to pay all the people for those extra time they could afford to pay people for the extra time exactly so uh, me personally I'm studying to be a film crew person uh -huh. and I was wondering like did you have a good relationship with the crew that was working on Power Rangers uh, while you were acting? Yeah, when I, when I was on the show, I was friends with more of the, the, the crew members after after work than I was with the cast members, you know? You know, nowadays, I'm more friend, friends with the cast. You know, I see, I see them at the conventions all the time. We hang out together on a regular basis. But when I was working on the show, you know, when I was done with the show, I was done seeing those guys. I'm like, you know, but I would always hang out with the crew members all the time, you know? Some of those guys were like some of my best friends. That's cool. And still are. All right, so uh, in Power Rangers Zio, you went from being the Red Ranger to being the Blue Ranger. Mm -hmm. did, did you ever feel like your character may have been lessened because of that? Uh, I'm sorry. Like, 
maybe your character did not have as significant as a role because you were now blue instead of red. Yeah, it definitely wasn't as significant. However, though, it really wasn't. I mean, once Tommy became the White Ranger and the White Ranger was the leader, it was already known, you know? I mean, it was already known that the Red Ranger was already, like, you know, taking a back seat anyway. So it was really no change. I mean, everybody knew that Tommy was the leader. And so when it switched from Red, from, from Mighty Morphin to Zeo, there was really no difference in my role or in the command or the chain of command, so to speak, you know? So I don't really know that people would think that, you know? Only in the yeah. beginning might have, where there might, there might have been confusion, you know? But, you know, anyone that was, took it all the way through Zeo, really knew that whatever my role was as the Red Ranger in Power Rangers is the same as Zeo. Not as significant as Tommy is what I mean. <laughs> so, uh, when a lot of people saw a Turbo Power Rangers movie, did you ever have any fans asking you if you were actually injured? Yeah, all the time. Is that Some just a common really question? Injured. Yeah, yeah, they asked me all the time. But I was not injured for real. I was. It was just part of the script. Well, that's good. Let's see. So, uh, there's been a lot of stories of when the Power Rangers actually work in the show, a lot of them ended up becoming roommates to afford costs of living and food uh, during the production of the series because of how much time you're spending on set and uh, how little pay that would be coming in. Yep. Did you have any of those kind of issues? No. Um, I, uh, I, I lived on my own. When I was on on the show, I didn't I didn't have roommates from the show or cast members that I lived with or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I took the money that I got from the movie, and that really helped help me to be able to like, you know, to live. And I and then from there from that, I took the money for that I got from the movie, and I opened up my own martial arts studio. And so then I was getting that extra income from the show and the, the and this karate school as well. So you know, I was able to afford to live on my own. All right. So. Let's see. All right, so here's a little fan question. What was your first thoughts of seeing yourself as an action figure? <laughs> well, the first day I was on the set, they, have, they had one of the, the set photographers come up and stand me, like, against the wall, and then he walked around and took a 360 degrees worth of pictures of my whole head. And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, well, because we have to make a, uh, we have to get, you know, every angle so we can make the doll for your head, and uh, head for, your, for the doll. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to have a doll. So I thought it was pretty cool. So, I mean, you know, who would not like that? Yeah. Yourself is immortalized in plastic. Yeah, exactly. So are you glad that the series has seen uh, some added popularity because of the Netflix and the DVD releases Netflix, in the past year? the DVD releases, the 20-year reunion. Yeah, I'm very, very happy about it. All right, well, was glad. I was really glad to talk to you today. Cool, thanks, man. Uh, it was fun talking to you, and you have anything you'd like to promote for, for um, what you're doing upcoming? If anybody ever want, well, I mean, I have tons of shows coming up in 2014. If you look at my uh, Facebook fan page, I'm going to keep everybody posted on that. So it's, uh, you know, facebook.com slash stevecardinas123. Um, that's my Facebook fan page. You can follow me on Twitter at Steve Cardenas PR. And um, also I have a jiu-jitsu studio called Force Balance Jiu-Jitsu. Um, you can look that up at www.forcebalancebjj.com. All right. Well, thank you for talking to me. Right. Be Thanks. sure to stay tuned to HeroTalkie.com for more interviews.